So what we'd like to explain now is something that is called a listening check on an audiometer. This is a very valuable thing that most uh, audiometer users don't do. But if they did, if they did this regularly, it would take them only a matter of maybe one or two minutes to do and it would save them possibly hours of regret uh, later. Because many times we find that uh, there is some type of problem which could have been detected drawing a listening check that goes unnoticed as one is uh, testing patients. And then it is finally realized that the test results are in error uh, because there was, a, there was a, a, a problem. And most of these problems are minor, things that can be taken care of uh, on site without even a service call. Okay? So that's what we're talking about now and that's the, uh, the listening check of an audiometer. Now I have a GSI 61 here because it is the most popular uh, clinical two-channel audiometer in the United States but this would apply to any audiometer not just the GSI 61. I'm just using that as a good example. Okay? The listening check involves uh, listening to each transducer um, and determining that there is um, a signal present from that transducer and that it, that signal is constant, consistent, and clean and of the proper uh, level. Okay, And so you have to develop a system of doing it. I have a system. I'm going to show you my system. Uh, but once you do this and you get used to doing it, it you're going to do it in one minute uh, and, and it's worth doing periodically. I don't know if I would do it every day, though some do. Um, but I certainly would do it uh, on occasion. Might be once a week, say Monday morning. Uh, could be once a month, but I don't know, like say on the first uh, clinic day of the month, but I don't know that I'd do it uh, less than that. Uh, I wouldn't do it more seldom than that. I would do it at least uh, monthly, if not weekly. And as I say, some people do a listening check daily, right? Uh, one reason to do a listening check daily would be if you have older equipment, more prone to problems. If you have a new booth and a new audiometer, well, then Maybe the once a month is okay. And of course, whenever there is any question about anything. All right? So, how would you do it? Well, you know that every audiometer has a set number of transducers that deliver signals to patients. Right? One is a standard set of headphones, and then a bone vibrator, and then, as I grab them here, insert earphones, uh, and then there, there would usually be sound field as well. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven transducers involved here. Two phones, two inserts, two speakers, and one bone vibrator. And so we want to be able to listen to those to make sure that there is a signal present and that that signal is uh, consistent, that it doesn't cut in and out. And I'll show you how to check that and uh, that it is of the proper level. Here's what I do. Uh, I turn on the audiometer and I start with the phones. And uh, I, in the left phone, say, I put a pure tone and that pure tone is at a super threshold level, okay? Uh, in fact, a level that approximates uh, conversational speech. I always put it at 70, okay? Now, uh, audiometers are usually calibrated at 70 dB as a measurement point, uh, and so I'm used to that. I, I've been <clears throat> working on audiometers since 1974, all my adult life, so I know <clears throat> what these signals sound like at different levels. 
I could tell just by listening if a signal level were off by more than 5 dB in either direction. Um, and you could get to that point too if you uh, practice this enough. All right, so I have uh, a phone on channel 1 and I have it at 70 dB. I have the frequency at 1000 and I have the interrupter on. In other words, I'm presenting a tone uh, continuously without holding the interrupter down from the left phone. And in the right phone, uh, I'll put narrowband noise. Uh, and make sure that that is turned on and being presented as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just put this on. And oh, the narrowband noise has to be out of the right phone. All right, so I have tone in the left, narrowband in the right, both at 70 dB, both on. So the first thing I want to do is very, very obvious. I want to make sure that I have a tone in the left and narrowband noise in the right. And by listening to them, I can tell if they are uh, of the proper intensity, simply because I'm used to listening to them there. If they were more than 5 dB off, I would know it. Now you might not be able to tell um, tell that about the level, uh, but once you get used to this and just listen to it enough, and it won't take that long, you'll be able to uh, you'll you'll be able to know that too because you'll be doing this regularly. Okay, well I'll shut my noise off now. Sometimes phone cords could be inadvertently reversed. In other words, left is right and right is left. <laughs> you know, I've had that happen just by kids playing in the booth and just unplugging and plugging things. So I want to make sure signal is present and what is directed to the left is in the left and what's directed to the right is in the right that, and that those, those signals are uh, uh, approximately the right level. All right, well now I'm going to shut my narrow band off, okay, uh, and just concentrate on the pure tone. So I'm putting this back on, the pure tone's in the left and now I'm going to put some stress on components that, um, uh, that typically give problems. The thing that gives the most problem in an audiometer are connections, connection problems, and then problems with cords. Okay? These cords are constantly moving as you take the headset off and on um, from patient to patient. And, um, and hang it up, take it back down again, etc. And eventually, uh, the wires that run through these cords actually fracture. Uh, and then the cord will work, the signal will be present sometimes when they happen to be touching, and at other times they won't. Okay? People call that a, there's a short, but it's not a short. A short is a, a current path that's undesired. Okay? This is a current path that is actually broken, not there. Okay? So, I'm listening to this, and now as I listen to my 1000 Hz 70 dB HL signal, which I am accustomed to listening to, I'm going to do this. I'm putting stress right here. This is where the most likely, the highest likelihood of a possible fracture in this cable, which is going to make the signal intermittent. It'll work when patient is in one position, he moves, and then it doesn't work. Okay? Uh, so, but when I stress this like this, if I have that happening at the point where it would be most likely to happen, right here, then I will hear the signal cutting in and out. Okay? Well, I hear a good constant signal there, and now I'm going to where it's plugged in. Okay? In this case, it's plugged in, you don't have to zoom in on this, uh, it's plugged in on the back of the audiometer. Okay? Uh, so I am going to actually turn, I'm, I'm actually twisting the plug as it's plugged in, and I'm listening, and I want to see if the signal now cuts in and out as I turn this. I physically turn the plug, still plugged into the jack, but I'm turning it, um, and I should hear still a constant signal that doesn't cut in and out, and I shouldn't hear static in there. If I hear static when I turn this, then that means I have a connection problem. 
And I might be turning this because it's plugged in directly into the audiometer, or if I have a booth, then I'm turning this plug inside the booth as I listen. Uh, and if I hear static, then here's what I do to fix it. Everybody has got alcohol wipes in their clinic. And since you have alcohol wipes, you're able to fix this. So while this is running, I'm unplugging my left cord because when I turned it, I heard static. And maybe even worse, maybe my signal cutting in or, in or out. Uh, or decreasing in volume and then increasing. Can you imagine this? On, if this was happening while you had a patient on Sometimes it's 20 dB down, 30 dB down, 50 dB down, and at other times not. Right? It's intermittent signal level because of uh, a condition of oxidation where the metals in the contacts in the jack and on the plug itself actually uh, oxidize slightly. Now, extreme oxidation is rust. You won't see that. Uh, but this is a non-conductive coating of oxide. So I, I wipe this off with uh, a, an alcohol wipe. And now I'm going to plug it back in. And I'm going to turn it while it's plugged in. And I'm going to maybe take it in and out a couple of times after I've wiped it off. And now as I turn it and I listen, I don't hear this signal varying in level as I turn it. And I don't hear it cutting off and on, and I don't hear the static. When that's the case, then I've fixed it, okay? Uh, and that is the most common problem that audiometers have, is this connection, oxidized contacts. Where can it occur? On the jack that's in the audiometer and the plug that's plugged into it, or in the patch panel inside the booth, or even the patch panel outside the booth, okay? So, Th those contacts can be uh, can be serviced just with an alcohol wipe like that, and you found the problem as part of your listening check. It sounds like this is taking a long time, but you're talking seconds to do this. Okay, um, so I'm now real happy with my left phone and the consistency of its output, the level of its output, and all of that. I would now switch to the right phone. And the same thing. I want to make sure I have good, constant, uh, this, this is checking the, uh, the, the, this is checking the, the, the continuity of this particular cord and making sure it's not intermittent here, giving it stress at its uh, point where it uh, is most likely to fail. And do the same thing. Turn the plug, make sure I don't have static. If so, I do a cleaning. If, if I heard this, this signal uh, disappear and come back when I did this, then what I would do is I would make sure that it's tight. Uh, if you have a little jewel or screwdriver, you can tighten these set screws. That could come loose, and it's just loose here, and that's what's causing the signal to cut in and out. Uh, what Usually that's not it, and you would replace this cord. And a phone cord, typical phone cord, would be a very easy thing to have a spare of. I would have a spare of it. And when you find a bad one, don't keep it in a drawer somewhere. Throw it out, okay? And then get another spare as a backup, all right? Then if you, because every audiometer, this cord will go bad several times during the life of the audiometer, okay? The audiometer is going to live longer than these cords are, okay? All right, so we did that. And now we would simply do this to each one of the other transducers. Okay. For example, I want to check the inserts now. So I am going to put a tip on it and I'm going to switch from phone to insert. And I have a pure tone going through the uh, right insert now at 70 dB. So I'm just going to throw that in my ear and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to listen. I'm going to make sure that it sounds like 70 and not 20. Okay. I want to make sure when I stress this little guy that um, I have a consistent signal that doesn't crackle and doesn't cut in and out. And the same thing, I can turn the plug where it's plugged in on the other side of the cord. And, and as I turn it and listen, I don't want to hear static or any variance in the signal level. <clears throat> if, I, if I do that and I have good constant signal, 
left, I would do the same thing. I mean, I just did the right, I would do the same thing with the left. And um, I will have checked that. And now the bone. All right. Now when I do bone, I turn this down. Because if you turn the bone on at 70, you know, it's going to rattle. I turn it down to something like 25 or 30. Continue with signal, and then I select bone. Okay? And then I listen to it. And I do exactly the same thing. I stress the cord, and then I stress the connection wherever it's plugged in. And I'm listening for a consistent signal. I could do this on, see right now I'm holding it on the mastoid bone, or I could just put it on my ear. Uh, the thing is being used to listening to it at that level to know that I have approximately the right level. There's a signal present, is it the right level, and then is it a consistent signal when I stress the cord and when I stress the connection by simply turning the plug while it's plugged into the jack. In the booth or on the back of the audiometer or both. Okay? Uh, and the next thing I would do is check the sound field. Make sure that I have an output that's appropriate uh, from left and right. I don't have to stress any chords there because they typically do not uh, go bad. Okay? Uh, the worst that can happen is the connection in back of the audiometer could fall out or something like that. Uh, but do I have, I just put on maybe a tone or a warble tone left and right to make sure the signal is present. Uh, other things that could be checked. Um, quickly and easily. If you have a, an operator's headset, you can make sure that um, when you choose the microphone on the operator's headset that you actually get uh, a, a signal on the VU meter. And when you listen through the headset for the patient's response that you are hearing it. And all you got to do is turn it up, put it on and turn, turn the uh, talk back up all the way. And even without somebody standing in a booth, you'll know that it's that 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 it's it's operating. Okay, uh, I don't know that that's that's all that important because you usually don't have problems there. The problems are right in these things. Okay, and their cords and their connections. Uh, and if there are any other functions that uh, that you'd want to check, uh, talk forward is another possibility where you would fetch press a talk forward button as you talk through the microphone on the headset and make sure that the VU meter um, is moving. And that is about it. Oh, a hand switch. You know, what I, I, I always check that. If I use a hand switch instead of having the person raise their hand, then I would uh, uh, just press that and make sure that the indicator comes on. If, if it's in the booth, then what I do is I turn this down I put something, whoops, I put something under here just to give it a little angle, a, a screwdriver or something, uh, so that I can be in the booth and watch this. And then I press the, the button and make sure that, I, that my indicator works. If it doesn't, then uh, uh, that, that button is probably bad. It would be good to have a spare uh, response button as well. Okay? It could be that you clean the plug and that fixes it. I'd try that first, and if that doesn't fix it. If you have a problem with transducers inside the booth, like there's no output out of left phone, right phone, left insert, right insert bone, or whatever it is, then a good idea is to say this, there's no signal. Then I would take it out of the booth, come to the back of the audiometer, and you see how everything's marked on the back of this where the phones are plugged in, where the inserts are plugged in, where the bone vibrator is plugged in. And I would unplug the patch cord, just one, and then plug the, um, the transducer, right phone, left phone, bone, right, left, insert, whatever it is, directly into the audiometer. Now I'm not plugging it in through the booth, I'm plugging it directly into the back of the audiometer. And now do I have a signal? If I, if I do, I know I have a connection problem. If I don't, what's most likely bad is either the cord, first the cord, or then the transducer itself. And then uh, if I have spares of these things, especially these cords, all right, insert cords, bone cords, phone cords, I should have spares because then I can just, this unplugs right from here, I can easily replace that cord 
and, uh, and, and repair that. And I've eliminated a connection problem from here through the booth by plugging it in directly. You know, then just remember to uh, plug the patch cord back in and plug it in on the other side. Okay? There's some pretty easy troubleshooting that can be done. If you have more than one audiometer, you could, you could take temporarily take the bone vibrator off another audiometer. Uh, if it wasn't working, for example, when you plugged it in directly and plug that in, now you've verified that uh, of what it is by uh, a process that we call substitution. All right? uh, these are all good things to know and they can save money, right? save you a service call, and they can also save you downtime, which is the most costly of anything. So I hope that that's been helpful. Uh, that's uh, called the listening check and to do that periodically certainly is something that every user of every audiometer should do. And very few do. Uh, most of our service calls involve something like this that the user actually could have taken care of themselves. So uh, anyway, that's the end of this instruction video. Uh, join us on, us on the Metacoustics web website for other instruction videos including VEMP testing, electrocochleography testing. We just did one today that highlighted the features of the Eclipse auditory evoke potential machine and we'll be doing that on all other products as well. So for now, uh, goodbye and I hope to see you again on another Metacoustics instruction video.